African leaders, businesses and development organizations have set aside over $30 billion for agricultural transformation across Africa over the next 10 years. These commitments were made during the recently concluded Africa Green Revolution Forum in Nairobi. Take a look. Statistics show that 70% of Africa's population is engaged in agriculture and that the continent's food market is worth a whopping $300 billion with potential to hit $1 trillion in the next 14 years. African leaders, businesses and development organizations seem to understand what these figures really mean, at least going by the mood of the just concluded Africa Green Revolution Forum in Nairobi. We are coming together at a time where our continent is faced with incredible opportunity, but at the same time it is also faced with profound threats, almost in equal measure. And this is in terms of food insecurity, in terms of youth, unemployment, and therefore to breach this gap, a discussion that speaks to the daily realities of millions of Africa's citizens is by any measure both important and urgent. WFP is also part of the team that is in the business of helping change lives. And that is the only way that be, we begin to move from saving the same lives every single rainy season is by ensuring that we develop the agricultural systems that will support the economic opportunity to, as so many speakers here today have said, move farmers from subsistence to business people. In its sixth episode, the forum focused on having everyone walk the talk. Among the biggest conversations was the insufficient commitment by African governments in financing agriculture. According to the 2016 African Agriculture Status Report by the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, commonly known as AGRA, only five countries have met the sector financing threshold of 10% of annual budgets between 2008 and 2014. This has stipulated in the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program ratified by the African Union in 2003 in Maputo, Mozambique. We can't just continue because we, we repeat the same things. We, we know these things that we should be doing. We need to just go ahead and do them. I mean, what else can I say? That is uh, <laughs> what I think we should be talking about. And we keep measuring results and pushing each other and, and slowing down and repeating ourselves. It is clear that without integrating our shared continental vision into our respective domestic policies, we will not only hold back one another but more significantly, we will keep our citizens from experiencing a wide range of benefits. If you have to end hunger by 2025, definitely you have to put in place a mechanism which is going to take this one forward. We have developed tools for accountability and the heads of state have agreed to come back together every two years to say where are we in the progress of implementing Malabo. In spite of insufficient for previous agreements, some more commitments have been announced in this year's forum to the tune of 30 billion US dollars over the next 10 years. This includes 24 billion by the African Development Bank, 6.6 .6 billion by USAID, 5 billion by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, 3 billion by the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and 1 billion by fertilizer producer OCP Group. Other pledges include 350 million by the Kenya Commercial Bank, 180 million by the Rockefeller Foundation, 120 million by the World Food Program, and 200 million dollars by the government of Kenya. It is estimated that food agricultural markets in Africa will rise to one, bit, one trillion dollars by 2030, from a value of 313 billion in 2013. The question for, for Africa is this: Will Africa tap into this huge market by investing now? in modernizing its agricultural sector? Or will it simply remain a net food importing region? The answer to this must be to modernize the agricultural system. 
We applaud the focus on a scorecard and metrics to measure that progress. Metrics that take a critical step to better accountability through new CADAP scorecard and through a commitment of measuring progress both on the input and the output side. Ladies and gentlemen, along with political will and sound metrics delivering on Africa's rich agricultural potential also requires a concerted and sustained global support and deep partnerships, both domestically and internationally, and we are privileged to have been part of that. Now we are looking at building fertilizer plants in other countries in Africa. So we are in discussion with uh, five countries in Africa that have natural gas. With natural gas, we can make ammonia, and we bring phosphoric acid from Morocco so we can uh, produce uh, fertilizer I I in, in the countries in Africa. The forum also focused on delivering for smallholder farmers who represent 80% of all farms in sub-Saharan Africa and contribute up to 90% of food production in the region. By focusing on this group, various stakeholders pledged investments and policies in agriculture technology, land ownership and access to markets and capital as critical ingredients to realizing a green revolution in Africa. The emergent farmers now are <clears throat> contributing much more to the development of the region uh, than they used to. Uh, medium scale farms between 10 and 100 hectares are rising rapidly and even though the international media has made a very big deal about land grabs by international uh, investors and so forth, by far most of the additional land that's being acquired in Africa is by urban-based Africans uh, who are uh, maybe, you know, mostly based in urban areas acquiring land through the, la through the land markets and using that in, in ways that is adding to productivity uh, in the African continent. The best way we, 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 we can deal with this uh, among others is to find how the young people fit somewhere in this value chain and play their part and play their profitable part. Everybody involved gets a profit. We must see the, 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 the uh, developmental agencies beginning to look at this from a different angle. And that angle must be an angle where agriculture is seen as a business and not as assistance.